Welcome to Beer, Bourbon, and Games. I'm your host, Chris. I'm here today at Rural City with Brewscasters. Uh, this is Luke, and we are here with Ben and James of Rural City. This is the second time we have come here. They have graciously allowed us back to talk about some fun stuff. You know, we're just going to sit down. Normally, I come in here with a list of questions. We're not going to do that this time. We're just going to mostly wing it and just kind of have fun and drink and talk about some of the stuff that's gone on since the last time. But uh, Ben's uh, crazy idea was to chug before we got started. <laughs> it was, it was Ben's crazy idea, and uh, this is the Colt Classic, which is a dark Colt. You want to tell us a little bit about it before we each chug it? 5.1%. It's light, crisp, uh, has a nice little roasty bitterness on the back end, a little uh, hop sweetness as well. It's not so much about the race of the Colt Classic, but it's more about the enjoyment of being in the moment. Yeah, for the cold. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Well, anyway, cheers. 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 <laughs> so far, all your beers have been really good. Thank you. We have. We can't complain. Um, I have gotten a lot of compliments about you guys being in the neighborhood. A lot of people that are appreciative that you guys took over. You definitely brought a wealth of um, knowledge to this area, and uh, people are responding. Um, cool. Now that I am working on both sides of this industry now, I have gotten to talk to a lot of different people, and uh, I've met some people that have come into your establishment, and they are really appreciative of how much you guys have embraced Greenstown and the culture around here. So hats off to you guys. Yeah, Thank we you. love it. It's awesome. Uh, it's, it's that's easily, the, easily our favorite part. Ben and I have talked about it. It's easily the best part is uh, the, the, the amount of people that we've met locally and then abroad. But locally, uh, some of our regulars have just been, uh, they've just been awesome. Like, Agreed. Yeah. It's been so, really keeping us alive, you know, mostly just mentally. I don't even want to talk about the financial part, but it's... No, no, I... But keeping like us alive, like, keeping us jazzed yeah, yeah. and, like, ready to brew some better beers. 100%. Um, we're having a good time, but uh, that's Tony in the background, in case you can see him. <laughs> All, about, uh, All of our regular followers Tony know Tony. Tony. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a door click away. Dork? Door click. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, all right. Fair enough. Door click. <laughs> door, door, door click. click. <laughs> door click. Yeah. Tony makes incredible smoked old fashions. Oh, they gosh. are fantastic. So nice. well, let's dive into that. So there's a lot that has changed since I've been here. Obviously, you guys were brand new open. You still were getting your stuff figured out. Um, we've got food now. We've got cocktails. We mentioned the old fashioned. So, what are some of the things that people can get here if they don't like beer, perchance? Well, let's take a step back. The first time you were in here, yes, uh, <laughs> we haven't even, we hadn't even brewed a beer yet. No, so, oh, that's uh, true. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's pretty wild. Oh yeah, yeah. we didn't even we didn't even try it off the tank. No, right? no, no. Yeah, wow, wow. So that's pretty. So that's huge. Yeah. So, so we've come leaps and bounds that way, beer wise. We have. I'm trying to think how many brews we're up to. Uh, tomorrow will be. Nineteen. Nineteen. Nineteen brews. Yeah. <laughs> well, the government is. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, true. So we yeah. keep track. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, since then, yeah. nineteen. So nineteen brews tomorrow. 19 brews, yep. um, which has been awesome. We've learned a lot about ourselves and about the equipment and about uh, ourselves. <laughs> but we, uh, since then, I mean. Yeah, uh, it's uh, it's been a definitely educational experience for us both. Um, I think our first brew day here was like fourteen to fifteen hours, and now I just I know it doesn't sound like much, but <laughs> got a seven and a half hour brew day last week, so that felt pretty good. It was it felt normal. For it felt me. like you yeah. know I could actually fall asleep before a brew day instead of just being like this is gonna be a long day. But <laughs> but now I feel like I can like come in. Just relax, do the brew day, yeah. make some good beer for everybody. And All that worries about the craft, though. That's yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Which I mean, fourteen-hour brew days versus seven and a half-hour brew days, still the same beer, yeah. but. <laughs> so what are you doing with your other seven hours? Exactly. <laughs> I know. 
still working, unfortunately. <laughs> or fortunately. <laughs> fortunately doing something else. But, but, uh, but not, I'm sorry. On top of all that, which is exciting, is uh, yeah, we do have a we have a full bar which we do uh, craft cocktails. Uh, we have been buying local cider, which is cool. We get to switch out the ciders. Uh, local wine. Um, we've been doing uh, exclusively Grandview, which is a great great space in itself. But they're also cool people. Um, great and good product. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and a lot of local distilleries for all of our craft cocktails too. So it's we also have we do have seltzers. Uh, they call them vodka sodas, but they're from stateside as well. So if you like seltzers, we have seltzers as well. Um, but I think most yeah, it's we're trying with everything. We try and uh, class it up a little bit, so it's not just you know you're not just getting a pint of beer. You're getting or a sour. You're getting fruit on top of it, and then with the cocktails too, we're classing it up a little bit too. So. 14 and a half hours definitely seems like a really long brew day, it was but a long uh, brew day, yeah. recently I got the honor to help Ryan out on a brew day for going broke. So you know, yeah, it's not I, <laughs> I saw just how much work it was. They locked me in the mash tun um, <laughs> while I was cleaning it. Nice. Um, <laughs> they actually do that? Yeah, I saw some of the guys. <laughs> Not Ryan and Sam, but some of the other people. Damn. They locked me in it. Oh my god! I can't get out. I'll Dude, tell you, um, you looked like it looked like you were putting your work in, though. Like, it's not easy, and you were sweating your ass off. It looks like. <laughs> One of the things that I really learned is there are so many people out there that want to be brewers, and after going through that day, I learned just how much of a passion you guys have to have to do that job because it is, it is not a glorious job. It's a lot of hard work, backbreaking work. We, we lifted, I think, seven different 50 pound green bags. And then some of the other stuff that goes in there, in the hops, like it is hard work. And that was milled grain. Imagine if it's not, you've got to mill it yourself. There's a lot that goes into it. So for you guys to put your bodies out there every day <laughs> just to do this, and for people to complain about it on Untap, like let's be honest, no, no. <laughs> like it just so, wasn't my style. Yeah. One star. Yeah. <laughs> you guys really like yeah. have my appreciation for what you guys do. I, I see what goes into it. I mean, I always see on the tours, like I know the four ingredients. I know like, yeah. but going through those tours and actually doing it are two far different things. Um, oh, that's Sorry. the. So guys, that's our 10 minute warning. He just, uh, he's going to be in the background carving right now. <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, um, when beer comes out of the fermenter and gets transferred over to the bright tank, we are typically forced carbonating to meet that level of carbonation that comes from natural fermentation up to where you would like it stylistically. Uh, so a lager would be a higher carbonation, whereas a stout might be a lower carbonation. But what we do is we force CO2 through a carbonation stone, and that actually uh, uh, mixes the CO2 through the liquid, and then the liquid almost accepts it. And so that's how, that's how a forced carbonation happens. Uh, what Ben's doing right now is he had already transferred up. <laughs> So he's, <laughs> he's using our Zom right now to actually do the, uh, the science behind our carbonation. What the Zom does is it actually checks your, uh, your carbonation within solution. What's been absorbed in the solution is staying and then it, it tells you what your level you're at. And I think that is the, uh, the oh, that's the whip beer. That's the whip beer we did a collaboration with Cartel. Oh, nice. So he just transferred that today and he's checking the carbonation on that, uh, which is a whip beer, so a little bit higher, uh, Belgian wit, and uh, that's going to get be prepared to be packaged for the weekend. So. Fun fact <laughs> um, for everyone watching at home, the ZOM is actually how the shake weight was invented. <laughs> so. Just less sexualized. <laughs> <laughs> this is the brewer version of the shake weight. This is all you fills out there. <laughs> Brewers have the tightest triceps around. That's right. 
I want to thank you, Ben, for your demonstration in the background. I don't I mean, know how much you can see it. But I'm not. not I can tell. I can. My heart was palpitating. It was good. Palpitating? Um, palpitating? Um, palpitating? Um, palpitating? Um, yeah, well, he was actually giving us a very good definition of what was going on back there. Uh, it was like National Geographic. I wish you would have done it in a, a narration voice. But, but uh, I'm sorry, but the eye contact. That, that was perfect. At Everyone at home feels like they were there, and then you with the demonstration. So for the people that learn by listening and then by demonstrating, we got both. Crikey, Ben's shaking up those bubbles right now. <laughs> and that would have been more of a. I guess that's not actually too rapid. All right, PST. Um, one of the things I want to talk about. Obviously, you said you guys hadn't brewed here before, but now that you guys are. Um, for people at home that never watched the first bur uh, brewery interview, shame on you. Uh, James <laughs> came from Swashbuckler, you came from Mad Chef. How has it been so far, the dynamic of both of you guys brewing, bringing different styles, are you guys button heads at all, or how, how's that going? Do you want to talk? Do you want me to talk first? I'll talk. I don't want to butt heads. First. <laughs> well, yeah. Let's <laughs> not butt heads here. No, you go. You go. I'll start, and I'll let Ben finish, because uh, to Ben's credit, um, he's been doing uh, I, I would like to say 75, but it's more like 90, <laughs> 99 <laughs> percent of You'd the like brewing. You'd like to say 75. Yeah, yeah. I'll say 75. Uh, 75 percent <laughs> of the brewing now, uh, just because there's so much else, uh, other things that we have going on, which is awesome. Uh, I don't get to do as much brewing as I want, uh, but Ben's been killing it. Obviously, people have been enjoying the beers. I drink the beers, so I think he's killing it. But it's that's the, I mean, I'm just doing the, sorry about that. I'm just doing the um, stuff. That's all. It's yeah. fine. I'm just doing the the hard break back breaking work, and but you know James and I we don't butt heads on anything really. I mean some stuff. But, like, <laughs> we don't need to talk about that. But like, <laughs> but now with like brewing, we can like we can just we discuss what we need to do next. You know, speaking yeah. of yeast, you know we don't we don't want to like waste yeast, um, and that's like just like the sad part of it. We, you know, when you dump yeast, it's just still waste but so sometimes jump, but yeah so jumping backwards i uh i learned quite a bit uh working with um brett from uh at swashbuckler but he was from stouts so i learned a lot about uh yeast viability and lagering and a couple of those like uh different things but then brett but, but then ben over at mad chef learned a lot um from him and, and rob and sean, sean and i mean yeah. like and even, you know, but, chef. Yeah, so, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so but, it does come down to, to answer the question anyway. But coming back to it. It's the, very, James yeah. and I have always wanted to work with each other, and every time that we have a cohesive in the past, we've yeah. always been excited about it. Yeah. But now we get to work every day with each other. Yeah. Um, but on the brewing aspect, it's very collaborative. Um, it's very mindset yeah. on the same goal. Uh, what kind of fruit are we using? What hops are we using? If it's you know IPA, calculating IBUs, calculating trying to get uh, a saison in the tank at some yeah. point. Like, yeah, you there's a lot. It's been a <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot of fun. No, we've been working very well together. Ben Ben has been killing it in the brewery, but in the end, uh, we work together very well with uh, <clears throat> what beers we are going to do, what recipes we want to do, what uh, IBUs we want to do. I mean. Yeah, it's been great. I I miss the, the physical side, but uh, <laughs> but no no, it's been a lot of fun. So what you're saying is, if you help, it might be a seven and a half hour day instead of those fourteen hours. <laughs> That's what I'm hearing. No, yeah. well no, I think well so one of the reasons that it became went from fourteen to seven and a half was that we brainstormed. Pim from Mad Chef helped us out too with yeah. his ideas as well. No, it was cool. Um, yeah. And then using all those thoughts and methods I, uh, it's jumping from and to hit those home brewers uh, jumping from your, your five gallons you know when you get a stuck mash in five gallons think about that it's like oh okay I can I can do something with this well when you're talking about a uh, 15 barrel mash where you're dealing with uh, 700 pounds. 750 to, to a thousand pounds depending on you have to really think about the, the fluid dynamics and then also your physics when you have too much water or too little water how much in your mash is going to compress 
when you're loudering. Like that is, if you if you bore off or louder too quickly, you're going to compress too quickly. Even though you have a good flow, in the end, you're going to really get yourself stuck. So, so it's one of those things that we've been able to talk with a bunch of the brewers in the Lancaster County Brewers Guild, since we're all pretty tight. Uh, being able to talk to all those guys and and, uh, and gals about ways of improving of improving your efficiency and even just your thought yeah. has been extremely helpful because I know I both of us reached out to, to different people about that because it's just a different system trying to get that locked in and in the end Ben's dealing with it but I'm trying to help figure it out no, it's, <laughs> and so it was a huge win anyway the other definitely, day it's, yeah. huge. It was <laughs> it's definitely a team uh, effort for sure we don't like to put it on any one person so it's all on that right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was going to be one of my questions, just how hard was it to really transfer over to the system? Because I know even when Cox moved from his garage to his new system, I mean, it's yeah. a learning curve to go up from a three to a seven oh, or, yeah. you know, yeah. I don't know what you're bringing on at Swashbuckle. I don't know what they have, but a 15 barrel is pretty, pretty large. So, um, so I got pretty lucky. It was a 15 barrel okay. direct fire. Okay. Uh, to bear to a vessel, two vessel system. which is okay. exactly what this is just a lot of you know slight differences um, so I kind of had an idea to begin with okay we need this much water to do this much grain right. for this Definitely much efficiency yeah. and then uh, top of that off with you know I have that but then top that off with a with a really good brewer who knows what you need to do to hit your efficiency as you for the people that didn't watch before, obviously they said they have a two vessel, so I can see the boil kettle behind here and I see the mash tun. Um, I can see a bright tank over here. Um, the only thing, I, I know your fermenters are back there. Do you guys have an HLT or is that the only thing that you? No, no. we do. Yeah, you yeah. do? Oh, oh yeah, cover that. Yeah, we have a hot, uh, 33 barrel hot liquor tank. Oh, wow. Um, so it's, when you empty it, it takes about 15 hours to heat up, probably. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I was you have to keep that in mind, but. I was gonna add in just a third girl hot liquor. So in our area, we have very hard water, Lancaster County, North Lancaster County hot water. So we uh, we did a lot of work to that mm -hmm. hot liquor. Yeah. Which. Uh, a lot of acid. Do you have the RO system or do you use like wall flock or? No, no this we're is using town water. Yeah, it's all town water. Which, we, which we're pretty proud of uh, too. Yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, we change up the chemicals to make it a little less hard on your palate and the beer, but we're putting Reamstown, Denver, Stevens, yeah. water. Yeah, we're pretty, we talk to a lot of home brewers in the area, okay. and, and they always get worried about the water, and then we tell them, well, try this beer. Um, this was brewed with the water from your town. Uh, the only thing we did was, we got it up to 185, which can cook out a lot of, yes. you know, the chlorine, mm -hmm. but we are adding water chemicals to, to fit the, the style of the beer. So hmm. it's kind of, it's just kind of cool. I think it's really cool yeah. the way that we are able then to, we have a, uh, one of our home brewers that we talk to all the time, Tom, yeah. he, uh, you know, he was, we had a long conversation about just about water chemistry and especially since he lives here, it's like, well, you don't have to do all that much. You have to go buy spring water or Deer Park. Yeah. You know, like you can use your town water and, and make it a decent beer. Like, so you it's like your pH levels or pH levels, uh, making sure that we hit those correctly. Um, you know, we have hard water, so we're softening it quite a bit for New England IPAs. And we're still using calcium carbonate. Yeah, calcium, um, uh, calcium chloride. chloride. You know, we're still using gypsum. Yeah, uh, we're still lactic using lactic acid and stuff like that. So. But that's all style based on style. So. Okay. Yeah. Now, for the people watching at home, um, a hot liquor tank doesn't actually mean they have liquor in a tank. Um, it's basically a hot water tank. Um, can you explain to the people watching what it's used for? Uh, we've also been doing Technical Tuesdays on our Instagram and awesome. Facebook. I appreciate those. Awesome. Fun. Good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, cool. I really love them because I'm learning a lot. Like I go cool. through a lot of stuff, but yeah. they're very helpful. That's one of our main aspects of this 
this place is to be educational and just keep that up with everybody. I have an idea though for you after seeing your video. I think we should have Machete Monday. Go for it. <laughs> machete <Yes>. Monday. <laughs> yeah, it might be a, a sour thing. This is what thing. not to do. It might be a sour <laughs> thing from now on. That was a good video. But, um, but uh, yeah, so Hollicker Tank, it's used for many different aspects of the brewery. Um, we use it mostly, uh, well, for brewing, sparging, um, but I also, I also like to hot kill a lot of stuff. Uh, nothing's going to really live in 185 degree yeah. water, so I even burned myself. Luckily not too bad today, so that's good, but I know humans won't live in that, so. <laughs> <laughs> Those bastards live long, so. <laughs> um, but yeah, so hot liquor tank, we, we use that for everything, and it's not a tool to uh, uh, take lightly. Uh, it's definitely dangerous to be in there. Uh, we don't have a direct fire, it is electrical, uh, which yeah. is nice, so um, I think that's more efficient, obviously, so. It's working. Yeah, it's keeping up, so, um, yeah. So, hot killing, sparging, brewing. On to you, Chris. Well, thank you, sir. Back to you. <laughs> and now Trisha's talking out with the weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's raining! <laughs> you want this, dog? <laughs> I'm sweating! <laughs> Well, there, there's a few things that I did want to cover here before we, I mean, I've been just kind of going off the cuff and making up questions on the spot as mm -hmm. you go, which is always fun because oh, cool. um, you learn stuff. But uh, one of the big ones I want to talk about <coughs> is something that didn't exist the last time, which is the Lancaster County Brewers Guild. Thank you, Ryan, for creating it and all of the people that are putting in work right now. There are 23 members inside of the Lancaster Brewers Guild. Uh, there's going to be 25. Iron Hill, I hear you, and uh, Bespoke, I know you're coming as well. But essentially, this, this is a collaborative idea from poor man's Ryan, as I'm going to call him, to get all the brewers together, help each other out, and really make Lancaster a destination. And there are a lot of destinations. People think of Asheville, North Carolina. They think of going up to the New England states. But very quickly from talking to people when I where I work, I've heard people say Lancaster is the new destination zone. And to have a committee of people kind of running it and giving the best experience is very, very helpful. Um, right now we have the Lancaster County Brewers Guild uh, passport. Sadly, they were sold out very quickly. If you can get one, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for you guys, how has the how has it A been being in the guild? Yeah. B have people noticed that you guys are in the guild and said anything? Are you seeing customers come in? All the stuff like that. I want to take two steps back really quick. <laughs> <laughs> so Lancaster, this is a different question that's no, no, not the this question is great. you're asking. No, 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 this is, asking different question? <laughs> this is all part of that same question is so Lancaster County, this is a time that has been coming. Uh, having the Lancaster County Brewers Guild is huge. So back before Prohibition, uh, we were Little Berlin. It was Lancaster County. So to be in a little county... Little Berlin or Little Munich? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I just didn't know what the different one was. I, I heard both, so I, I didn't know. Well, one of us is right. You can correct us. Um, <laughs> No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm, I'm not sorry. sure. <laughs> we're button heads, all right? <laughs> we don't love that. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, now. Okay. Either, sorry, either way. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. Either, either way. way. Little Germany. Germany. Little Germany? Should we just say Little Germany? No. Let's just say Little Germany. <laughs> little Germany sounds good. Yeah. Little Germany, yeah. So, so, yeah. so the fact that now Lancaster County has, what, 23 just in the Brewers Guild. Just in the Guild. Yeah, which is awesome. Let's just With say two 25. Coming. With two coming, they, 25. They, they paid their dues. 25. They're in it. They're in it. <laughs> just, to have, <laughs> just to say, Lancaster County has 25 breweries in the Brewers Guild, and even with a couple outliers and a couple... God, Ben! <laughs> I'm taking the car. <laughs> Take the car. Yes. Well, no, no, don't worry. I'm going to get back to my National Geographic. <laughs> I'll be back. <clears throat> Sorry. If you look behind me. Cut. We need to address the elephant in the room. There has been a time jump. Another alarm went off. Uh, <laughs> so I kind of, of remember where we were. Uh, Little Germany. 
Little Germany. <laughs> We also, we got a pour of their new sour, we got some beer from Mellow Mink, and we got some from Rainy to sample. So we're going Ooh, to have some yummy, no, no. Pennsylvania stuff to sample, but let's go back to Munich, Germany, whatever we want to call it. Um, so as you were saying before, uh, you know, Lancaster, it was meant to happen. Uh, mm -hmm. Lancaster back before Prohibition was Little Germany. Uh, so, you know, being, you know, starting out smaller breweries, you know, Lancaster Brewing Company, Stouts back in the day, you know, all this stuff. And then just from there, little places start popping up everywhere. And then, you know, James and I moved into Lancaster County and we just started seeing that love. No, and, and that was, so when we got involved, and I remember a conversation between, uh, it was, I happened to be there, but it was mostly between Ben and Rob and Sean, they were like, we need to do something to like grow this because it's just so awesome. Mm -hmm. And then luckily, and, and I'm sure there was lots of jibber jabber because brewers love to drink and talk, but uh, <laughs> Ryan grabbed the bull by the horns and like, and kind of said, hey, we need to do this. And and he and his team, not to, not to discount anybody on his side, because when a brewer makes a decision at a brewery, uh, it's the whole team. Everybody has to be behind him or her and, and really be on board with, with what's going to happen with the business. Um, so the fact that they all came out and, and decided now's the time to make the, the county stronger um, is huge. It was a, it's absolutely huge. We could not have made that step. We were very busy. It was a decided uh, factor was, for us too. Yeah, um, uh, I know they're very busy too, but yeah. We were almost, in Lebanon, we were almost in Lebanon County. Uh, yeah. And then the guild started getting actually some momentum. Some traction, we like, for we sure. We can't exactly. miss out on this, so. Yeah. Um, but so, it's been great. So which is fun. huge, because that, I don't wanna say 100%, but it's like 99%, that's what drew us back into the county. Uh, and that's what's drawing a lot of uh, tourism into the county too is the fact that we are a unified front. We are all uh, friends, um, comrades, if you will. Like we all work together, we all help each other out. Um, we are very fortunate that we are able to be a part of something so cool. And, and not only is it cool and fun for us on like a personal level, but when it comes to like the business and then growth, and then also being able to take it to that next level where it, it, it creates this, um, this experience for all of our passer buyers that, that come in with our, with our passports or if, they, if our locals, our regulars, like they come in and they're like, oh, what is this? Like, it's just another way that we can all talk about beer and really enjoy it. Yeah. So yeah. I'm very fortunate. I know Ben feels the same way. I definitely feel the same way. Yeah. It's awesome. very... You know, we were all, most of us were mostly, most of us were friends before. Yeah. Just even just talking to each other about recipes or even just how things are going with business-wise or whatever. But, uh, but now we're, we have a chance to meet together every quarter or less than that and just even just enjoy each other's company even more. Yes. Yeah. Now it's, there's more, there's 25 breweries that we can talk to about their experiences. So long run, it's just making the place better. For everyone, so that's oh, yeah. the idea. Yeah. So. Now the 20, 25 breweries, is that like, it, uh, they're in the guild, but is that how many is in Lancaster, or is there some that not, not are in it? Uh, or? There are some that are not in it, so, so I, can't even, I can't even County, think. County, Chris, do you know how many are in I'm Lancaster I'm not County? sure how many are in total, but I do know that there are a few off the top of my head I can think of that aren't in it. I, 34 um, is in my, is this? I'm oh, thinking wow. it's about that. There's some breweries, are outside of the county itself, but they have a tasting room in Lancaster County. Okay. And so because of, not only is it cool that they are here and they're serving their beers, but it's also part of Pennsylvania where you're allowed to have your tasting room. It's like a, a storage extension tasting room. Yeah. So they are a part of Lancaster County, but their main facilities are not in Lancaster County. Right. Um, so that kind of excludes them, I guess, from being in the... No. Oh, no, they're able to join. No, no, that's the cool part, is even if they have a tasting room, 
Uh, they've been given the opportunity to come and join. Um, oh, that's actually, the thing about Tattered that. Flag. Tattered so Flag. So they are down in Middletown. Middletown, right? Yeah, Middletown. Middletown. But uh, they have a tasting room in Lancaster City, and so they were welcomed with opening arms, and uh, everybody over there was like, hell yeah, like this seems awesome. So they are, they are members. And it's just like, so anybody that has anything to do with the county that we can all build off of each other and grow with each other, it, it's, it's pretty sweet. So there are, I'm trying to think of who else there might be. Well, I don't want to point I don't want to name him. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to be like, I can name him now. No, and, and, and honestly, it all comes down to, to <laughs> it all comes down to how you think your business, uh, unfortunately, it comes down to business. How do you feel that this can help your business? And um, it just takes a little bit more for, for it, it's good for us because we're so fresh and we're so new that some of these older uh, companies might not be ready for that because they don't need it right now. But at the same time, they, are, they have been 100% with us when it comes to the community side. Yeah. It's just remember, it's, a, it's about joining that, that uh, club. Uh, and, and that's the wrong word, I guess, but uh, the group. You know say, what I mean? I would say guild. Yeah. Sorry. Oh. Guild. <laughs> Maybe I'd say guild. <laughs> but, but the brewery like community in, in itself is just so awesome. So even if they are yeah. not a part of the guild, they're still a part of the community, yeah. which is humongous because we still talk to them and reach out to them. It's just not in their their wheelhouse or even business plan. When you're, when you're a brand new business, it might not be something that you can, you can do. Like realistically, logistically, you want to as hard as you want, but you just can't, you know? It's just, it's, and there's gonna be starting a business is crazy. Yeah, <laughs> there's, Lancaster is pretty big. I mean, I drove down South Lancaster and I was like, I'm still in Lancaster? Yeah, it's like, it's, oh my gosh. Lancaster's big. So it's, so there's plenty of room for more breweries and No, um, and so the beautiful part about the guild too. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I didn't have anything else to say. <laughs> <laughs> Butting heads. Uh, the beautiful part about the guild <laughs> is that none of us have felt indifferent towards anyone that's not able to join the guild or anything yet, but it's, yeah. it is such a um, I think it's just a benefit. It's such a benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Thank Long story short, it's yeah. just a yeah. huge benefit. I don't want to dwell on the benefits, but the benefits are great. <laughs> but did you have to like buy, like, I don't know, like, quote unquote, like, buy into it, or you just say, there's hey, you want to be in this, fee. and then be like, yeah, no, yes, so there's, there's a membership fee because nothing runs on uh, happiness. Um, and goodwill. Yeah, yeah and we're goodwill. all we're all very happy to be a part of it, but but there are always if we wanted to do the passports, you have to have uh, funding. So so we have we website. All, like, we all pay into what that. we believe, yeah. and we all believe in the guild. So yeah. yep, totally worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For someone like oh. me that believes in the Lancaster County Brewers, is there any way someone could support you guys and? maybe donate funds to the Lancaster County Brewers Guild or anything that you guys have considered? It's a good question. I don't know. Um, I'm sure we'll, we have plenty of ideas and events like coming up that are, I don't know, are we over, we're over a year now for the Guild. Um, yes. So we're yeah. over a year. Um, so we have plenty of ideas uh, and there's still more to come. You know, we have some great brains a part of the team. So we're going to, we're gonna figure out ways for that to actually happen as well. So great, great thought. Um, I think we'd want to do like a special event instead of just asking for money, um, so that there's some sort of return. Yeah. Um, I would say. Um, Don't you know. For the girl, but yeah, I don't. Yeah, I would never. But but there's you know, something. we'll figure out something. You know, maybe like <laughs> maybe the next county one. I don't know. Yeah, and you can. Even, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. It was awesome. Yeah, so next next county wide, we we blew through our keg. It was um, awesome. It was yeah. crazy. Fastest fastest beer that went through fastest beer in the world city. Yeah. <laughs> in the West, yeah. Yeah. Easily. No, it was, it was <laughs> awesome. So our county so we did the county wide. I don't know whoever's out there that doesn't know about the county wide, but Lancaster County Brewers. I always forget to talk to them as well. But, <laughs> Lancaster County Brewers Guild, and I don't know if you tuned in, I've watched uh, a bunch of beer brewing games 
uh, a bunch of their episodes and they talk about the county wide. Um, but just to reiterate, it was a beer that was brewed throughout all the breweries that are in the guild that uh, we all had on tap. And uh, luckily for us, like we had such excitement up here in Reamstown that was like, uh, we sold out in that that night or the or the uh, next morning. We released it on a Friday. I think we were going we out on the same night. Yeah. I, I might say Saturday morning, I like I had a taster and a kick, but yeah. <laughs> I didn't even get <laughs> but like, it was awesome. Else the, the, just the excitement even up in northern Lancaster County was just like the it's bees and cool. It was great. Definitely cool. Yeah. Uh, so those sorts of things. If you wanna if you wanna support the Lancaster County Brewers Guild is when we do something fun like that, get out and try it. Yeah. If we do a uh, tap takeover someplace, or if there's anything going on brewery, microbrewery related for the Lancaster Brewers Guild, uh, Guild get out there and do it. Uh, keep doing what you're doing, drinking beer. Tasty beers. Um, other than that, I mean, I mean, as of right now, it's, it's just, yeah, I mean, the whole we're point. We're all so young, so. The whole point of the Brewers Guild is just to, you know, we're all friends, so we're all trying to support the small business, and that includes every small business in Lancaster County. Yeah, yeah. We're all yeah. fighting for our lives at this point. Um, maybe not some, but that's what it feels like for most business owners, I think. So um, it's supposed to be helping the uh, the small guys. So that's the whole point. Doing it, baby. So which is good. Keep drinking beer. <laughs> <laughs> keep drinking beer. That's the whole point. So for anyone here that is wondering who this guy is next to me, um, he is Luke from Bruce Casters and through Instagram. There are plenty of people out there besides me that support the local beer initiative. Um, and one of the things that he does is Tasty Tuesday, where Ooh. he will go ahead and yeah, every Tuesday he reviews a random beer, kind of gives a view on it. So I figured we could do one live right now. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, we'll throw it into this. Um, so we've all got this beer right in front of us right now. So Ben and James, go ahead and tell us what this is right now. So this is our Town Square Blackberry Pineapple Kettle Sour. So this is our newest one. Uh, we had raspberry and cherry lime before. Um, you actually saw Luke drinking the raspberry one, I believe. Um, so this is the newest one. This one was, uh, was released down at the beer garden in Lancaster. Um, and we are trying to find a line for it here, but you guys are lucky enough to try it. Tell us what you think, Luke. This is Yummy Num Num. Um, I do, I love that color. I really love that color on that. Like a nice, like a pinkish, pinkish yellow, yeah. I guess, if you will. Um, <laughs> and uh, you got a lot of the, lot of the berries. A lot of the berries on, 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 on the nose there, I like that. Very aromatic. Um, and it's not overly tart, which I like. I don't like a lot of the super puckering, like right in your, punch in your face, like tartness. I like the mellow, mellow tart of this. And it's just has like the, it's just bright with the fruity berries and, and the pineapple. I do, I like this a lot. Now, was this a kettle sour? It was a kettle sour. Kettle sour, okay, so that's a two day brew day then, correct? Uh, yeah, closer to, closer to three actually. Okay, because normally you have to let everything kind of yeah. read itself and then you boil it afterwards, correct? Yep, yep, so it, uh, it is a bacteria of sorts that goes into the kettle, so we seal up the kettle. Um, uh, we see, yeah, I'm like, go <laughs> seal up the, yeah. uh, John, maybe. <laughs> we seal up the kettle, uh, we throw something called saf sour in, uh, which is from Y yeast, um, and that, uh, that eats it up and poops out, sorry, I forget to say that, but it poops out lactic acid. Um, we boil off whatever that, uh, um, bacteria is, and then we do our regular brew day from there, so adding hops. Uh, Warflock, uh, yeast nutrient, stuff like that. So that is what a kettle sour is. Um, there are plenty of sours out there. You can age, you can wild ferment, yada yada. Um, maybe someday we'll do that, but that is difficult <laughs> um, to say the least. But uh, I like these guys. They're, they come out clean. Um, 
straight out of the tank. They taste like lemon to me. Yeah, it's lime, so good. Citrus. Plain, I, I like the plain. Yeah, plain is good. It's so good. It is good. <laughs> but, but seeing Ben's, that color like in the sun, yeah. it's a little dark in here right now, but seeing it in the sun, it's like... It Ben's like smart enough to know that... It's like a watermelon sour patch or yes. something. I like so it. So it's like... Mm. Yeah, I like the plain, which is just a straight sour beer. But Ben's smart enough to know that uh, if you add fruit to it, it's even better. The color sells, yeah. for sure. <laughs> you know, color sells and... And it tastes delicious too. So do you well, condition so. it in the keg then? Or? No, I put it all in the bright tank. So okay. uh, we were gifted <laughs> with old fermenters, so they only have uh, two inch ports. So it's about like that big. And you're shoving a little fruit in that? Yeah, oh, wow. we're not. That's the thing. <laughs> so we're just complaining doing. about the yeah. one and a half inch ports yeah. on the bright. Yeah. So, oh, you're uh, there's a two. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, it is tough to get it into the top, so I have to do it through the door. Um, so, which is story. which is also sanitation. Yeah. So sanitation in the brewery is huge. Very. Right. That's like the only thing. Luke, I don't know if you know, but uh, it all comes down to safety, sanitation, scarification. What's it, what's scarification? Scarification. Scarification. <laughs> <laughs> Who's phone? Nobody ever asked that. that. That's but that's but scarification is the conversion <laughs> of uh, of uh, your your uh, grain, like your when you're mashing in. It's your conversion of complex sugars, okay. and so there, yeah, that's scarification. Long. I like, I like, long, big words, words. Big, big words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sophistication. But I was really trying to just come up with like uh, some kind of an acronym, like SSS. Yes. Safety. Sanitation. Sanitation. So have a good time, everybody. It doesn't work. It's like security. So have a good time. Have a good day. So have a good day. See you in a while. I really, I really rock. See you all in a little bit. I'll tell you what, it was a good month. Ask my wife. I was like, I just sat in a corner. I was like, I need these three S's. What is it gonna be? Slap. No, you know what? <laughs> Did you make that up yourself? No. Oh, uh, yes. Hey, you told me. Yeah, you. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. You just been walking around saying that forever. <laughs> I'm like, somebody smart said that. I'm sure. <laughs> no, that was me. Me <laughs> too. So somebody normal, not smart. That's even better. <laughs> somebody totally <laughs> average. <laughs> somebody average. Oh, what is this? Cool. While you were making up words, um, I was pouring the Tropical Island IPA, which is a tangerine guava. Um, 6.2% from Raining Cellars. Sean, love your stuff. Um, this was fantastic. So, of course, I got it crowded. And just a reminder, because I did post this on Instagram, places do have to-go beer. Whether or not they have six packs or four packs, whatever it is, they normally have crowler machines. So if you go somewhere and you like it, take something home like I just did. Crowlers are a great way to support the business and also introduce new people to the brewery. You can take them to a party, whatever it might be, but this is very tropical. Um, I remember it being fantastic, so we're about to find out if that was still the case. It smells guava. very soft, very guava. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of that on here. He's uh, swirling his around a lot. He's gonna get as many notes as he can. <laughs> He's gonna try to reverse engineer this. Um, yeah. Did you guys? Did, did any of you guys try it yet? I uh, I don't really, I don't really see anything wrong with that. Am I right? That's really good. That is really nice. <laughs> That is nice. I was like, this is a friend, don't say anything No, bad. good job. No, I really like it a lot. No, that's my first time having it. That is really good. But, it is very again, solid. he's a master of the craft, and, yeah, he makes good beers. Now, there's, there's only a few more things that we haven't talked about since um, you guys have opened. When we first came here, you did not have any food. At this point now, you do have food. There's been a lot. There's an okay. awesome dessert. Um, the charcuterie board with the homemade jalapeno uh, jam, jam oh. is so good. Mm -hmm. um, that is my wife's uh, go-to. We've even took, taken it to go, which was interesting. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, the chili is fantastic. So they were kind of talking about Grandview Wines earlier. We did go see them at the Grandview Wine. They do like a oh, beers and, and beans or chili type cook-off. So that was a good time. but. 
what do you guys have right now? I know your menu, you wanted it to be kind of like an evolving door, what you have, fresh ingredients. So kind of how's that going? Uh, it's going really well. Um, James uh, really has, you know, he is, he is CEO as well. Um, so he's been doing a lot of the numbers, keeping us up to date, keeping us relevant, uh, keeping us lawful uh, with the government as well. Um, but also, you know, as soon as, as soon as Thursday comes around, Thursday morning comes around, he's, he's in the kitchen. He's brewing the, brewing, he's brewing, brewing the brewing. chili. <laughs> uh, so, something's he's doing, brewing! He's, he's making the chili, he's making the jam. You don't want to know uh, the chili's made. Beer cheese, yeah. He's doing the beer cheese. Yeah, and, but not only that, but you know, uh, well, it's, I think you saw Tony in the background too. So yeah, I was just but, gonna say it's not only me. We have uh, an awesome uh, staff in the kitchen, which a lot of our regulars don't see, but they know. Um, they are in the kitchen helping me. We we make all of our own house made beer cheese. We do the the jalapeno jam, which you mentioned. Uh, a lot hummus. of us. Oh yeah, the hummus. I mean we. Yeah, I mean, even the burger patties are made in house, and then we cook them for our uh, our banging ass uh, smash, smash burgers. burgers. Oh, yes. <laughs> which we, oh, which gosh. I almost say that because we've heard really good things about it, and People I really eat them, them and they're really good. <laughs> People really but, enjoy them. But we are called the banging ass smash. Burgers. <laughs> <laughs> we have the uh, banging ass smash and the banging ass sweets. <laughs> but. Uh, you know, we're really trying to keep what we do in the kitchen craft, so it's not just craft in your glass, it's craft on your plate, which... And then chili will craft on your glass. <laughs> yeah. I'm not exactly sure that's the tax code. I don't think I would use that. Craft so, on your glass and craft on your plate. We're going to change that tagline, but, but in, in the kitchen, who, who we have, and, and I've been fortunate enough to be able to work with our staff is... Is uh, we really do put uh, the time into food. Like we get our raw materials in, and we turn it into what we are proud of, and uh, and that's something that I know. At the end of the day, like we're eating it, and and our our beautiful uh, company that comes in the door. Oh. Customers. <laughs> that's not good to think of it. Yeah. Our beautiful. Patrons. Uh, uh, patrons. Patrons. Mm. Customers. Reflections. Beautiful customers. <laughs> no, no, no. But, no, but, yeah. but we're all, you know, and, and actually we've had a lot come in and uh, give us ideas on uh, other ways to do it. So the scotch eggs was from somebody. So we're doing scotch eggs here. All local sausage that we're, we're uh, turning, the, you know, that beautiful hard boiled egg wrapped in that sausage and then deep fried. Mm. It's good. Yeah, so James and Tony are really killing it in the kitchen. Um, We're trying. I, I, like to, I like to say my ideas and sometimes they listen. It's pretty good. You're, what's, what's coming is uh, ben, ben does all the sourdough in house. Oh, uh, so we use a lot of that sourdough. I actually put the sourdough in the beer cheese, but we also use that for our charcuterie board. But what Ben's been working on now is, is it considered Chicago? No, it's Detroit. Detroit? I'm sorry. Detroit style deep dish, but it's all of Ben's house uh, sourdough. And I'll tell you what, yeah. it's, it's phenomenal. It's, really <laughs> it's so good. good. Yeah. It is so good. I wish I had some for you guys. But it is. It's very good. So good. It's very good. <laughs> I mean, one slice is not healthy. I don't want to talk about it. It's good. It's, it's, so, good. Good. it's so good. It's so good. But so anyway, the idea is all in house, all craft, and as yeah. what our kitchen is, we're trying to do uh, that seasonal aspect. Um, we have brunches and, coming up once a month. Brunch. Ooh. Oh yeah. Which is this Sunday. This Sunday we have live music, which I don't know when this will be posted, but probably not that fast. <sighs> Get off your ass. But <laughs> <laughs> but I think we're trying to I think we're trying to go for first watch first, our social medias first Sundays of every month. Is yeah. We so we'll have live music in the morning until about three or four, and then yep. we'll have a brunch to come with it. So. Yeah, which is uh, cooked by an incredible staff, James. <laughs> <laughs> and we've been busting out with, uh, uh, we're doing um, cornhole. 
Oh yeah, cornhole. Now cornhole. every other Sunday, depending on what's going on, but. A lot of uh, cornhole tournament style. Are you thinking of doing any trivia, any other events coming up that you guys want to talk about? So what we've been kind of focused on, oh, actually, oh my gosh, yeah. So since the last time we've talked to you, Tony has come up with uh, our uh, Thursday Night Spotlights, which has been an opportunity for uh, a bunch of local businesses to come in on Thursday nights and they share their product with people, uh, customers, and we, we buy product and we use it behind the bar and we, uh, we kind of spread that, that, uh, that local uh, feel. So that's, that's been actually huge. Local, yeah. That was local, way bigger local, than, local. than any of us thought it would be. No. Yeah. Just was because. that like your daily need, like uh, your whiskey takeover? Yeah, 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 we did the hippies, the hit and still. Um, it's still uh, Thistle Finch was out Thistle Finch, night. Grandview. Grandview was out um, I shouldn't have put us on the spot because now I can't name everybody. Uh, but I can keep <laughs> going, I guess. Um, I could look at uh, the Dutch, Dutch Country was out. Oh, yeah, Pretzels. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. So it's been almost everybody. And if I miss yeah. anyone, I, I for, like forget us. But um, but it's been awesome. Yeah. And yeah, it's if, you are, <laughs> if you are interested oh. in... in or if you know a business that would love to come out and do a, a, a spotlight, please let us know because our number one goal is, is community and also to grow our community that we are in and our community expands well past just Reamstown. So yeah, um, we've been having a great time. Anyway, if you've been lucky enough to come out and you're watching this, events, <laughs> so yeah, events, <laughs> brunches on Sundays, cornhole in the afternoon, uh, we have a murder mystery coming up in July, which I think is July 9th. Yes. Yeah. July 9th. We're, trying to, just, yeah, we're yeah. going to try and make it to almost every beer fest. Yeah. Um, Do you have any beer fests that you're officially in at this point? Yes. Yes. Which uh, ones are going to be? Mount Hope Beer Fest. June 11th. Right there. June 11th. Yeah. Which is such a good beer fest. I'm, that that's one of my favorite ones. It's, it's so, so good. good. It's it sucks. rains every yeah. year, but it it's does. really good. And it's supposed to rain this year, which I'm really excited about. Oh, it's so good. It's like nostalgia. <laughs> we love being wet the rain <laughs> It's not the uh, effort. June 11th, uh, June 25th is effort at. And we're really excited about being a part of that. Um, I've never actually been even there because nice. it's always like my past jobs, I was busy. So I'm really excited that we're going with that. Uh, we've done a bunch of small tastings. Yeah, um, Griddle and Grind. Uh, Shep's Grove was huge, Shep's Grove. which was like awesome. Those are like small little things that we're always trying to do around the area. I so, saw you at Hillside recently. So oh Hillside yeah, for Hillside. Over. I'll tell you what. Riker awesome. Bottle <laughs> Shop. Riker Bottle Shop downtown. Yeah, um, Riker's been good. They want us to come back here very soon, so we're going to try and do that as well. Yeah. Um, but you know, all of these events are what we're doing, but we also have a beer garden down in Lancaster, uh, Lancaster City. So, yeah. so we're not only doing all these little guys, but we're also having that huge thing as well. So check us out, we're in house district. Yeah, I could talk an hour about yeah. beer garden, so. Do you guys do any like barrel aging or? Yes, we already are. Uh, we already have yeah. barrel aged uh, beers downstairs in our basement. Um, the first one was uh, Rainy City, which was a collaboration with Rainy Sellers. That was a an Imperial uh, A huge imperial stout. success that sold out way too quickly. An imperial <laughs> Stout. Uh, the bottles are not sold yet. We haven't bottled it yet, but we only we had a very small amount um, on tap, which was probably my fault that we only had a small amount because I was drinking it every day off the tank. <laughs> <laughs> to taste. Um, it was the research <laughs> development. Yeah, it was so good. Um, and I'm very excited for that. So that'll probably hopefully be coming out at the end of the summer, early fall. Um, and then we also have our brown ale, uh, which is the, ch is the chopper. Chopper. Yeah. Um, chopper is a maple brown ale that is probably our most popular beer. It's, it's crazy. People it's like very interesting. Yeah, there was maple syrup in it, and then just like a nice, sweet, not too sweet, sessionable it's from the malty. Yeah, 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 we have. Yeah, have, um, we yeah have, it was. I never expected it, so I took half the batch, did the maple, put it out, and then people were just like, "Oh my gosh, this is like the best!" And I was like, "I wasn't expecting that," yeah. and I already put the other half into barrels, and I was like, 
Shouldn't have done that. Well, yeah, we have people ask <laughs> I was like, that. Just, just left just it. Like, it's a, it's I was a like, solid. Like, I, I took a took a chance and I. It was really good. Yeah, <laughs> people loved it. People loved but, it. But but just the fact that I back the, though, so. because I like it doesn't mean anything. But customers are asking. Oh, so. they ask about it all the time. Yeah, like, yeah. Anywhere I am, doesn't matter where I am. People are asking about the chopper. Get to the chopper! <laughs> like, Come I'll, on! I'll bring it back. Hurry! <laughs> it's in the barrel! It's in the barrel! I can't do it! Open the barrel now! <laughs> do it! Do it. Sanitarily puncture it so you can have it will be, uh, But it'll be... <laughs> that's like this whole thing. Yeah. yeah. It'll be a barrel-aged maple it. or brown <laughs> ale someday, I guess. But... Um, so anyway, so that's, that's in the barrels. What's the uh, what's the film that you shouldn't puncture? Pellicle. Pellicle. I don't know what the it's just the pel. So the pellicle is so just teach, like a, teach everybody a bacterial yeah. uh, skin over the layer of beer that's in a barrel. It protects your so beer. So when so okay. and this will be a technical Tuesday someday here hopefully soon because I have to get some nails in but so yeah. <laughs> so yeah. on barrels which is. Let's say this is a barrel. Well, that's you, class, but yeah, I can, <laughs> I can see. I, I, I said, can let's that. say this I is can, a barrel. I can see it. I can let's see say it. this is an intelligent gentleman. Um, I, can, I can see what you're trying to go for. <laughs> so, this is a stress. so this is a barrel. Knocking heads. Um, <laughs> so this is the barrel. Uh, you don't quite fill it up, but you have the pellicle on top, which protects it from. Oxidation and other yeah, air. And air ben whatever. taught me all this, so, so I'm like really. So when about you're it. tasting the barrel, you take a sanitized drill or a, uh, I'm sorry, drill bit, but, yeah. stainless steel, poke it in the side, put a nail in it, and then every time you taste it, you pull the nail out. And anyway, hmm. but it it stops itself from breaking that pellet. I just think it's super cool. Ooh. So that's why I want to bet. It's pretty neat, about. but. Any beer that you put into a barrel is an investment of it's a risk. So yeah. It is a risk. So it's not always like fun, fun and games here. But oh, it's, it's terrifying. It's, not, it's never beer bourbon games. Sometimes it's <laughs> <laughs> it's beer bourbon at risk. Beer bourbon at risk. <laughs> but uh, but yeah. Anyway, long That's story short, terrible. James James and I love talking, obviously. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we have the the Imperial Stout, the Brown Ale. Uh, I also have a gin. Yeah, so I have a gin barrel downstairs. Yeah. That's from uh, Re Revivalist. Yeah. Um, which is uh, brandy wine distilling. Yeah. But I threw our Winter Stagecoach, which is they they do like very botanical it's very uh, gins yeah. so it's not so much juniper for it whereas like when you drink it it has a lot of uh, botanical spices and they do very seasonal so we did the uh was it the winter solstice yeah solstice solstice <laughs> the winter solstice <laughs> not uh, we did our our stagecoach <laughs> yeah. winter solstice the stagecoach which is uh, close to an English mild, our take on English mild, um, that is in those barrels right now, in those gin barrels, just so we're pretty barrel. stoked about so it's that. About, yeah, it's oh, it's one, two, sorry. I don't know, I thought we had two. Well, it's two barrels. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sorry, I'm um, sorry. Yeah. Anyway, but that one's really going to be <coughs> really cool, so that'll come out hopefully here in July. Um, Whenever the hell we want. Yeah. Gin is pretty easy to get out of the, the barrel, so. <laughs> so, can I, can I turn this around just a little bit? Go for it. Uh, Chris. <laughs> so, Chris, beer, bourbon, and games. Uh, oh, I, no, I am, be... I'm very aware of uh, your base, your uh, beer, uh, bourbon, and games. You're very, you're very honed into your, uh, the craft. Uh, and, and you also love the fun, the, uh, the AI side of, of the human brain. Um, but do you stick mainly to, yeah, whatever. Do you stick, <laughs> do you stick, the AI, the AI, the artificial intelligence side of the human brain is a video game, I think. Like it's, it's a human's input into something that is going to expand or, or, or uh, it's like real life VR. It's like, oh, <laughs> no, so I'm saying is, so I, I understand your side, like, and I love it. 
Uh, but do you stick to mostly local, or do you do all PA, or are you a fan of uh, beer and beer? I'll stick to beer. Are you a big fan of beer across the of the globe, or are you mostly uh, beer, or what? Well, we're turning this around. Yeah, yeah. Um, I love it. I love it. So, beer, bourbon, and games, we do not um, discriminate against any beers. I will drink anything that's thrown in front, in front of me. I, I think that's a great way to learn different brewing styles. Um, like Pilsner or Cal um, is a great example of a, a great one that's out there. Um, you know, there's people that have been brewing things for hundreds of years, thousands of years, so they know what they're doing. But at the same time, it's to me, it's very important to build up the community around me. So as much as I will drink anything, when I go out, I try to always buy local. Um, when there is a tap list, I will look to see who I know that is on there. Like um, local place, hey, Poor Man's is on here. I'm going to have some of that over something from Sierra Nevada. No offense, I love Sierra Nevada stuff, but if I can support Ryan, I know who it's going to, and to me that means a lot. Um, I've devoted a lot of time and energy to not only try to learn this craft, um, I, I've learned so much more than I ever thought I would, and I've met so many people that I never thought I would. The first people I ever interviewed was Ryan from Poor Man's. They, I'm just, away. they just opened, they were oh, brand that's, new. That's cool. Um, so to see the growth that they have, to me, is very rewarding. You guys have been open going on a year now and seeing how much you guys, not really, six months. <laughs> how much, I think we're up to seven, maybe. But. Just seeing how, coming much, up, coming up. seeing how much you guys have grown in such a short period of time, to me, I think it's the most rewarding thing that you can. So when I'm both online or working, I try to get people to go as many places as possible. Yeah. So yes, local is my passion. Awesome. Um, luckily for you guys, Lancaster is where I call home. <laughs> yeah. um, if, I, if I ever move, maybe that home base will change, but I'll never forget you guys. Um, but yeah, the Lancaster area is where I, I call home. The reason I ask that is uh, you are, whenever I talk to any of the brewers, you are always out enjoying a beer at a local brewery. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, I always wanted to ask you like, so how far do you stretch? But local is like, that's where, that's where, that's, where, that's it, man. That's and, awesome, I love it. it. It's crazy too, because local to me is relative, depends on where I am. Right. Um, Pennsylvania is where my, my heart is. I mean, I grew up in Lancaster my whole entire life. So that's where I will always sit. But luckily there's so many great places in Pennsylvania. So I'm not of a shortage. Um, when I'm in Pittsburgh, I can go to Grist House, Dancing Gnome, Roundabout, their Hitchhiker. There's so many, no matter where you go, I try to support the local base. Um, I have heard from a lot of brewers that, you know, they appreciate what I do. And I mean, I'm not looking for any of that. I just really just want to go out and make sure that you guys are still here. Yeah, That's yeah. the biggest thing. Keep the lights on. Um, because this isn't some billion dollar conglomerate. It's two local brothers that went into this. They, they rose from assistant brewers, head brewers, whatever they did, and then they opened up a brewery. They threw all their chips in there. And what can we do to try to get people to go there is very important to me. So I will always try to recommend all the local places above anything else. That's awesome. Love it. We appreciate that. Well, cheers to you. This is, you know, when we first had that, that, first, that first interview was made us feel like we were actually part of the yeah. crew, you know, and made us feel like, we're, oh, this is actually real. You, you were know? the first like, interview we did. Yeah. It was just oh, like, yeah, but seriously, like that. I, I, I walked over and I was like, yo. Your bourbon and games wants to have us on their show. Yeah, <laughs> so it's like it's cool. Like it's. I didn't know that that your one follower would see it. I was just so excited. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs>
<laughs> no, but I think that's no. I I love no, it. No, but I, I hope you are growing uh, with more of these interviews too. And like, I'm sure there's plenty of other breweries in just Lancaster County that you have not interviewed yet. And but I'm sure your face is getting out there. Um, I check them out. You know, it's fun. The interviews are great. No, I do. What was the last one? Uh, Clyde. Compass Mill. Yeah, Clyde. Compass Mill. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, we watched, we watched that. that. I was brewing one day, James turned it on, and I kept coming out. And I was doing it, work, and I'm watching back. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, it's been awesome. Like, uh, you know, after the first time that we had our interview this, the first time, we were like, let's do this again. You know what I mean? So, thank you for coming back and doing that with yeah. us. I do want to say that I know you guys were both extremely nervous when I showed up. Yeah. I mean, you guys are oh, wow. yeah. you guys are outgoing, you're crazy, but it can be intimidating putting yourself in front of a camera. This is kind of you know permanent, um, but I hope I did a good enough job to make you guys feel at ease. And you were singing Yoda by the end, so um, <laughs> and uh, stop it now. <laughs> and for all the people that I, I haven't interviewed yet. Um, I just want to say, like, these guys took a risk on me. Um, we sat down and we, we had a great time. It's not anything crazy. It's not professional. We're just people enjoying beer, and that's what it's all about. There are much bigger niches that I could go into. There are – I could constantly review Budweiser, which has a national appeal, but I would much rather – build a base of people that I know, like, and support the local craft, and that's what makes sense to me. Um, luckily, we've we've built a Facebook group, plug to anyone watching, um, <laughs> that is a great... Thank you. That was not the right symbol. <laughs> no, just... <laughs> <laughs> there, there are some much larger groups out there, but there's a lot of combativeness, there's a lot of animosity, and that was not what I wanted. So, um, if you want to join a group that has a whole bunch of people that just like brewing, brewing beer, whatever it is in general, Beer, Bourbon, and Games on Facebook is the place for you. We have about 500 members at this point. We have almost 1,000 people on YouTube, so there is a pretty good base of people that are trying to build up this community, which is important to me. And my hope when I started this was to have brewers use my page as a place that they can do announcements. Yeah. If you guys have a cornhole tournament, you have a beer release coming, please use my page to promote it. I want the people that like beer the most to be able to see it and not see the thousands of hate posts all over the internet that just are everywhere. Yeah. The internet is a terrible place, so what I want to do is make a place where people can just post what they want yeah. and feel safe. And so far, thankfully, Luke is a member. I think you guys are in there as well. No one has caused any issues. That's so great. It's that's a great place. Really, yeah, that's been awesome. <laughs> yeah, we're no, I love what you're doing. I love what you stand for being uh, being a dude of the uh, of the community. Local. And, and I, yeah, I, I'm sorry when I did that whole switch, I didn't mean to put you on. No, you're fine. But, but I think it's something that, that a lot of these interviews I haven't seen is anything about you and, and what you're trying to build here. And it's just like, I think it's like, it's awesome. Yeah, and Ben and I have cool. talked about it. It's like, hey, oh, Chris is out there. It's like, well, where isn't he then? It's like, yeah, I feel like he's everywhere. Yeah, yeah. It's like, it's just so good to see you come out and sponsor and, uh, events and like support all of our, our businesses and like and then doing these interviews. I know uh, you have a wonderful wife and uh, <laughs> you got time away and, from home. That's and sure. and I know it takes the support of hers. Don't check your phone. Yeah, <laughs> I was gonna pay you for the phone. <laughs> <laughs> no, and she's awesome too. When she when she comes out, it's just like. I, I know uh, I know that you're in this for the right reason. So, um, coming up, we're gonna do a, a quick fire with Luke, and uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be great. Check it check it out. We are going to take a quick break to refill our beer and uh, probably you know 
all that jazz. And then Luke is going to finish us off with a few questions. And then we are going to uh, end this interview after that. Right now we're going to do a quick little speed round with Brutecaster. He's going to rapid fire off three questions to the people at Rural City. I know he's been pretty quiet, but we're yeah. going to get him into the game. This is the first time he's ever done anything like this. And what better people than Ben and James to start him off. I made sure to get him into the fun group. Uh, there is, there is, there is no fun police here. It's just a rapid fire bit of craziness. So while Ben pours out a doppelbock from Warwick Farms, uh, what is your first question, Luke? Actually, before before I get to the questions, go for it. Um, I'm just I'd just like to say thank you, Chris, for bringing me on here, and also thank you to you guys for letting me kind of. Quote unquote, crash the interview. Yeah, well, absolutely. While well, 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 I just yeah, kind of like sit awkwardly in the corner for nah. a bit. But um, nah, nah, nah. just it. it's been like, I guess, with my channel, like with the last, I would say, year, year and a half, I finally have been, instead of just taking pictures and posts, hashtags, pictures, posts, hashtags, I've been just finally now actually talking and getting to know people here and there and talking this and that. So that's why I'm kind of like more of self-reserved I guess kind of like sitting on the on the sidelines but um, but yeah this um, this has been a great session so far definitely you guys are we really warm welcoming and um, so yeah just want to just start off by saying that so thank you to everybody absolutely and, uh, and thank you for uh, yeah. being a part of this Luke uh, <laughs> 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 no, that's good. and I guess on to the rapid questions you, you said like this was the uh, the big daddy. Well, not the big daddy. The big Toby with Idaho Seven. You said you don't like using it a lot. Idaho Why? Seven and Chinook. Why um, don't you like using Idaho Seven a lot? Um. So in my experience, and that's been mostly uh, at Chatty Monks and Mad Chef, uh, using it just alone, um, I have gotten some uh, diesel um, uh, burnt uh, burnt rubber. Um, flavors from it. Uh, a lot of people oh, enjoy it. Yeah, I know. It's, I, tough. it's, it's like hop. It's my tough good hop. buddy and mentor, <laughs> Pim, he would say uh, burnt rubber in a good way, which I'll never understand. <laughs> but but uh, I think it's a good mixing hop. So we took a chance on it and put it into our Big Toby, uh, which is our double New England IPA at the moment. Um, and I get a lot of like resinous flavors from the, on the back end. Um, there's some tropical fruit notes in there as well, uh, but you know it's it's a bright orange from this this camera angle. It looks pretty good, um, but it's it's been a good beer. Um, people are pretty excited about it. Um, I think a lot of people are really excited about our sessionable beers right now as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I mean, I, I piggy bock, uh, piggy piggy bock, piggy bock, because piggy 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 we have piggy a bock, piggy bock <laughs> <laughs> with this, uh, well, this <laughs> <time>. <laughs> piggy bock, <laughs> piggy <Piggyback. laughs> back off the big Toby. <laughs> he said, uh, uh, Ben created a, a beer that, like like he showed you, is the color, but uh, it also resonates with the town. It's named after its by a stream, so it's one of those things that. Uh, it's not only you know big in ABV, but it's also big in the town where a lot of people Founder. know yeah. about the history. So, so that's something that we like to hit with the beers, along with it being uh, a banger. Yeah, it's good <laughs> it's, beer. It's really good. But long story short, Idaho Seven. I've I've had some mixed feelings over the past couple of years, but using it with a strong Chinook hop. Um, I think it really came in strong. Uh, it was paired well with it and didn't give me any of those flavors that I used to get. So maybe it's the crop year or just the mixture that just played well with it. So. And I'm hoping he didn't ask this in his other interview with you guys, but is there like a favorite hop you like using or a favorite beer style you like to, to go with? He did. He did? But well, um, there's no problem with that because it changes with the seasons. That, well, that's, that's, the seasons. that's a beautiful question, I think. Is, it changes all the time. Yeah. Because yeah. you can go back and watch the first interview and it's so different from now. Yep. Like, oh, yeah. I, yeah. 
Ben, since you do all the brewing, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just trying to figure like, what have we used the most of that that you've been like super happy with? Um, because I mean, honest, I don't know. Uh, I know. Hop pops, or are we doing hops or hop beer style? Hop. I can't. Hop, yeah. hop, straight up hop. What have we been using the most of? Because we now we've done the New Zealand, New Zealand Zaka? Cascade, yeah. New Zealand Cascade has um, citras in there. Awesome. Mosaic, just like so different. With uh, patchwork, patchwork is our mosaic smash yeah, IPA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, West I was Coast. Even thinking mosaic. That's, um, that's such a kind of a standard hop. It is mosaic, a, but standard, but it's also a sexy, sexy with, standard. With our sure, patchwork, yeah. it's like oh, it's, it's great. It's yeah. really good. Um, I've never actually tasted mosaic like this from this beer, like. It hits like the front with all that citrus, and then you taste almost like a different mouthfeel for me on the back end of my tongue. It's almost like a thick, resinous <laughs> with two C's. Uh, but it's like really good. But I don't know. I, I it's like, been really I like good. experimenting. No, it's yeah. been awesome. Um, we've been using Southern Aroma, which is a South African hop, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, for like some of our softer. Uh, new Palesner that will be coming out. That's like what you get out of that. Um, we use that and um, Cryo. It's not out yet. It's in kegs, but it's not out yet. Cryo, uh, Cryo Cascade. Cryo Cascade was that was that was I mean, the you've banger. Been, you've been, yeah, you've been yeah. you've been using that. I mean, cast or uh, tailgate was the big one with that. We yeah, plan would come back to that, but there's so many hops. I don't know, yeah. Look, I was using there are so many hops. <laughs> but like, speaking of speaking of friends, you know, we were talking we when we were first opening, we were having a little tough time like finding hops on the I don't know, cheaper side. Yeah, black market. <laughs> Guys that are just walking around with jackets showing me hops. It's wine town. It's wine town's a crazy town. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we got some hops from uh, Tattered Flag. Um, so they helped us out there, but that was uh, a Falconer's flight, so I was using that for quite a while. Yeah. Um, so that was pretty showcasey. But we always try and like figure out what's best, you know. But that's what's so great about the community is just asking, like, hey, yeah. what are you guys using these days? Some hops are almost too expensive and we can't use them at the time, but um, but we always try and mix it up. Yeah. So, so favorite hop is a loaded question. It's yeah. very that, that, that question probably should have taken us like wow, two sentences. Two sentences. Two sentences so either. that was your fault, Luke. But this sorry. is my this is my <laughs> favorite. Hop. There you go, artichoke. <laughs> this is our hey. artichoke. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, it's the artichoke hop. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's a dick move. I'm no, sorry. It's, it's, it's great. It feels good. It feels good. Sorry. No, but I think, no, it's a good question, though. It's, it comes down to, you know, bittering, dry hop, and aroma. So and, it's just... And personal preference. Also, yeah, the alpha acids versus, and, and not only that, but what you want to take away. And yeah. that it's... So I gave Idaho 7 a second chance, and he came back with a great beer. So it's... It or is. they, they came back with a great beer. So. No, it's it's yeah. wild. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's just, you can get to the science, but in the end, it's also the art. Every year is different, uh, based off of your soil. Water, soil. Yep. Mm. So you can have your science as much as you want, but then it also there's always an art in brewing, and that's like it's just a living. It's living beautiful. Story. It's crazy. I want to thank both Ben and James for sitting here with me today at Rural City. This is the second time we have sat down. And Luke here also joined us. Uh, so if you have not yet, go ahead and follow Brewcasters. He is on Instagram. And make sure you come out to Rural City and support the local guys. They would greatly appreciate it. Make sure you hit up the beer garden and check out all the events that they have coming. If you have not yet already, go ahead and click the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the like and leave a comment down below as to what your favorite beer is from Rural City. We'd like to see participation from the people that are local. Until next time, guys, I'll catch you back on Beer, Bourbon, and Games.
valve is open. Oh, it's closed. Nope, now it's open. Unlike normal animals, he has opposable thumbs. <laughs> he's making his job much easier. <laughs> much, much easier. <laughs> <laughs> he still doesn't know how to wipe his own ass, but he's mastered the tap system. But for the love of God, he'll pour a beer. <laughs> Which we are all very thankful for. Thank for. <laughs> By the time he gets back, we might die from being parched, but he's taking a sweet ass time. <laughs> As Ben works tirelessly <laughs> to get us this sample. This beer. He's shaking again. He's shaking again. This beer right here is dying. <laughs> <laughs> you need to wink at the camera. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Time for a lens flare. <laughs> As Ben shakes himself. <laughs> Favorishly. You can feel his triceps just bulging. <laughs> I've never seen a man work so hard. How much protein does he intake? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have so much to add. <laughs> like the cutting room Or at least on right still now. Like, yeah, I just, I'm, <laughs> It's just so much easier to let it run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't <laughs> <worry>. <laughs>